please welcome all together Crew. All right. Hello, Bitcoiners. So, uh, my presentation today is on privacy and why it's important and the strategy behind it. So, I'm a contributor to Wasabi Wallet, uh, and let's get started. So, why is privacy important? Well, the second quote here explains why you might want to keep information hidden from other people. They can get jealous of what you have or what you do, what you accomplish, and they can use that against you for things that don't really matter for the subject at hand. So you might have heard this phrase, uh, people, should, people should pay their fair share in taxes. But how do people know what their fair share is? Typically, they look at how much money you have and then decide from there. But this is the way a robber works. A robbery is determined, how much you pay is determined on how much you have. So there's some things you want to keep your cards close to the chest for. The problem is that your physical body didn't evolve for privacy. Humans live in a high trust environment. So you recognize your neighbor, you do business with them, you're not really uh, in a predator and prey scenario uh, like other organisms have in the wild where they adopt camouflage to protect themselves. So what you see here on the screen is an American performance group called the Blue Man Group. Now they're all exactly between 178 and 185 centimeters tall. And they all have painted blue skin, shaved heads, no beard, and they don't speak a word during their performance. So you can gain privacy as a human, but you're gonna kinda look ridiculous and you're gonna have to find some people who want to blend in with you. So technology has evolved to defeat uh, human privacy. What you're looking at is some facial recognition. Uh, so anywhere that you're in public, you're always under threat of someone just observing who you are, where you're going, and what you might be doing at the time. So even if you don't use, you know, uh, compromised technology yourself, like Facebook or uh, Google, that are designed around this information capture, the person sitting next to you at the conference might have their cell phone on that's recording everything you say. Your neighbor might have a doorbell camera, which they're using just to catch potential intruders, but this doorbell camera is gonna notice you every time you leave your own house and every time you come back. So, how can we defeat this uh, weakness in the biological human body? Well, there's the flip side of technology. Even though our attackers have become very capable, humans can embrace virtual identity. So instead of uh, being flesh and blood and a face, uh, you can be a string of letters and numbers. This comes in many different forms. I'd encourage everyone here to uh, use Noster. Noster is a great way to, um, to carry your identity in a meaningful way that you can communicate uh, and expand your influence. So, the problem is that before 2009, you could only be as influential as how persuasive your words were as a pseudonym. You didn't have the key to human prosperity, which is the ability to trade. However, this changed in 2009. Bitcoin is the missing piece that gives sovereign people the ability to not just speak their mind, but also channel the highest form of energy that humans can muster, which is purchasing power. So, now you can make a much greater impact on the real world by uh, creating new incentives for other people. But there's a problem with this, is although Bitcoin is perfectly trustless money, the trade-off is that there uh, can be some privacy problems. 
So a Bitcoin public key is just an address. When you receive money to this address, the sender knows who they're sending it to. And when you send money from this address, the receiver knows who they're receiving it from. So necessarily, in the best case scenario, two addresses will be linked together by using a Bitcoin key only once. So we don't want to overlap our real world identity with our pseudonymous keys. And we don't want to link multiple pseudonymous keys with each other. So in the Bitcoin white paper, uh, Satoshi pointed out in section 10, titled Privacy, that multiple keys that appear as inputs in the same transaction are necessarily owned by the same person. So maybe you want to spend uh, 0.1 BTC, but you haven't re ever received in the past an amount of that amount or greater. So you're going to have to start combining previous amounts you received across multiple transactions in order to get the coins where you need to go. Something else that Satoshi didn't point out in the white paper, but is, uh, is a privacy problem as well, is that you don't have, or sometimes you have more than you want to send, not just less. Well, we don't want to waste any of the sats that we have. They're very precious to us. So we create a new key as the sender to store our leftover coins in, which is the change output. And if you see in this transaction, there's uh, a very distinct address type. It's spending a two of three multi-sig. And on the output side of the transaction, there's one address that looks similar to the one that's spending and one that doesn't. So from our powers of observation, we can determine that the second output belongs to the same wallet as the sender. And we can continue to track that in transaction after transaction as this gets broken down into smaller pieces. So how can we defeat this? These are the most two common blockchain analysis tactics, is common input ownership and tracing a change output. But even though the Bitcoin blockchain is entirely public, we can fool the blockchain analysis tactics by doing what the Blue Men Group did, right? We purposely mask ourselves to look like each other. And we can do that with a group transaction called a coin join. So a coin join is completely non-custodial. You don't have to trust that anyone else is going to run away with your coins. You don't have to trust the operator who's coordinating the coin join transaction. Uh, so this is an example on chain of a transaction with over 100 inputs and over 100 outputs. So it looks different from our previous examples where it was very easy to track which addresses were going to which addresses. But in here, on the output side, all the amounts are the same. We've created identical clones of one another so that you can't attribute any particular address uh, to a different address. So what are the different kinds of coin joins? The one you just saw before is a Wabi Sabi coin join, and it's used by Join Market and BTC Pay Servers coin join plugin. Uh, and then there's another flavor of coin joins that is performed by a software called Join Market. And just a short explanation of the differences here. They'll both get you to where, where you want to go. They can both create private transactions. But the trade-off is that a Wabi Sabi coin join is, acts like a bus. There's an interval that the coin join participants must join or leave or, or must join before the transaction begins. So you might have an hour for participants to get to the bus stop, and then they all get on the, uh, on the bus at the same time. And this is very cost efficient. You can get a lot of privacy with only a little bit extra block space than you might spend in a normal transaction. Then join market is, uh, is a very great sovereignty tool. The incentive structure uh, has makers and takers. Makers provide liquidity, and takers pay for the liquidity, and you can get this on demand instead of having to wait for the bus. So as long as you can pay the cab driver, he will take you anywhere you want to go, 
and do it on demand. So there's another flavor of CoinJoin transaction called a pay join. And there's no uh, picture of mempool.space up here on the screen for a pay join because you can't even tell that one has occurred. A pay join takes place between a spender and a merchant. And since you are going, already going to spend coins to the merchant anyway, this provides the opportunity for the merchant to add to your privacy and add to their own privacy by combining one of their inputs along with the one that they're accepting from you. So all these different methods can solve the, uh, the problems with Bitcoin's privacy where inputs can be linked together to the same wallet and outputs can be traced to future transactions. All right. So I'm done pretty early, but I'm ready for questions from the audience. If anyone has some, you can shout them out and I can get a shot. Yes. Oh, sorry, right there. I can't hear you. Can someone uh, reject um, coins that have been joined? Do they know that it's been joined? Right, so that's a very good question. Um, the Wabi Sabi coin join on this screen has a distinct on-chain footprint. So you can tell uh, that coins have been made anonymous, but you can't tell where they originally came from or where they're going to. So if I were uh, trying to uh, ensure that I know all the data about my customers, you know, as a business policy, I could choose to reject deposits uh, from such an address. Um, my solutions for this, first of all, is to switch to someone who respects your privacy. If they're trying to hassle you because they want you to pay not just with your money, but they want you to pay with your data, find someone else. Now, another solution for this is you can layer privacy technologies on top of each other. So you can take your coin join output from this transaction and then open a lightning channel with it. So your lightning channel provides an additional layer of privacy so that when you're sending money over lightning, people can't tell even which on-chain funds it originated from. And then the other solution is to use uh, pay join. So pay join looks indistinguishable, indistinguishable from a normal transaction on chain. So you can't uh, effectively block a pay join because there would be too many false positives and you would be interfering with your regular customers. Other questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. A great talk. Um, so just um, a practical question. I mean, the, um, the charm of Bitcoin is that you can take it across borders without anybody knowing, right? It's, it's one of the charms. So practically, um, many people uh, have bought Bitcoin uh, with KYC. And let's say you want to switch part, you want to obfuscate part of it, so to say. So how do you, would you practically uh, be dealing with seed phrases and stuff that you would have, for example, to remember when something happens? but you have a wallet which is partly uh, kyc seed, and you also want to switch part to a wallet which isn't. How would you practically do that? Just additional seed phrases would not really be an option. What would you do? Yes, so um, some people might prefer to have one stash of KYC coins and one stash of private coins um, you know, that you might have bought from a peer-to-peer -peer exchange or got the private coins from uh, selling goods and services. So combining these two is not good because the KYC entity will become aware of all these other transactions you did privately. So what you can do is uh, if you want multiple wallets, you can even use the same seed phrase with a different BIP39 passphrase, right? So, uh, but that's, that's mostly UX. Um, 
However, you can. Uh, You can use CoinJoin to make your KYC coins no longer trackable by the KYC entity. So this is especially important because a CoinJoin can be used to reset the age of your coins, right? Let's say you bought some coins um, at the beginning of 2020, and you did that from a KYC exchange, and you never spent them until now. Well, they might notice that the price has gone up from 7,000 to 70,000 and tell someone who is involved in taxes about that and you might not enjoy that. So what a coin join does is you can reset the age of your UTXO. If you coin join at the beginning of 2020, you can safely hold your coins in an address that no one is aware of and then coin join again once you're ready to spend it and it will appear that you might have gotten rid of the coins immediately, and you might have just gotten the coins before you spent them just now. So there's a lot of different ways you can uh, avoid the downsides of KYC pressure um, by, uh, by using a coin joint transaction. Other questions? Awesome. Well, thank you, Bitcoiners, for coming out, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, Leah will be up shortly uh, from Vexel, and that'll be uh, another uh, privacy-focused project that allows you to acquire and uh, unacquire your Bitcoins. Thank you very much.